Where is it? No time to explain, eh? Uh, no, that's just blocks. I assume it's somewhere in his living quarters. Still nothing. Uh, where does one keep them? Who would store medication in this mess? Hmm. A clockmaker, apparently. Oh, there we go. Can't see what she's doing. Oh, it's just a newspaper clipping, it's not medication. Uh, I wonder if it's stored in the boat. A woman's writing saying, Grandfather, don't forget to take your medication three hours before dinner. He probably forgot. Kirk's prosthesis, but it looks like it isn't finished. Mm. Uh, right. Medication, medication. Let's check that um, boat. It would be a safe puzzle box. No? Uh, no. Well. Medication, medication, medication. Oh. Am I doing something wrong? Medication, did I miss something? Medication. Who would store medication in this mess? I wonder if I could go ask uh, his granddaughter where it is. Oh, what's this? Who would store medication in this mess? Mm, let's go ask her. Not easy. Still not sure how. No. Tea. Uh. Oh, we can't go outside though, can we? Yeah, we're still locked in. No medication in sight. Yeah, no, he's dying. It's like, Arr. empty. Mm. What's this? Ah, tea. Good, good, good. Make yourself right at home. <laughs> Don't mind me. I just own the place. Hey, dude, I'm trying to find your medication. How was I supposed to know it wasn't in that bird? Seems like a perfect. All that clattering must get really tiring after a while. Logical place to me. Uh, let's put the empty cup here. No. I thought I thought I'd set it to four o'clock considering uh T 
tea time. I think I'll need some more information. I don't even know if this is related at all to finding his medication. Seems unrelated. Who would store medication in this mess? Still nothing. Yeah, no. I only managed to just light up that boat, didn't I? Nothing else. There's nothing here. Just a note of... Uh, wait. <sighs> Stupid chair is in the way. A woman's writing saying, Grandfather, don't forget to take your medication three hours before dinner. Three hours, so maybe three o'clock? I don't know, six o'clock seems like a good dinner hour to me. Fantastic! Hmm. Let's go back to the clock and set it to three. I thought it said two hours to be fair. Uh, no, wrong. This one. Uh, no. Not three o'clock either. Talk to him, like, where to you keep your medication? My heart. I need my medication. <sighs> Quickly. Yeah, where is it? No? Ah, okay, there it is. One of these, I'm sure. There's no point. Nothing that could help him. That could do him more harm than good. <laughs> No medication. I'm just going to make a comment on everything. No way. Nothing that could help him. <laughs> that could do him more harm than good. How? It's in the last one, isn't it? Ah. Steiner's prescription. That's something. No medication. All right. Uh, let's check his prescription. Maybe it has a clue on... Oh, what time was it? Oh, it would be in the journal. Oh yeah, I've got this one. Newspaper clipping. Read. Baranur Amusement Park, eh? Interesting. Ice fishing drama. Uh, that's... Yeah, that's the uh, fisherman's brother. Hmm. Uh, doesn't seem to be relevant to what we're currently doing. Doctor... Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm hmm Preferably at tea time. Well, that doesn't really say anything then. Uh, 
Because when it's tea time, I'd say four o'clock. But I come from a country where there is no such thing as tea time, so... Uh. So I could be very wrong. Maybe it's five o'clock. Apparently it is five o'clock. Oh well. We don't drink tea in the country I'm from. Anyway, got your medication finally. <laughs> I just uh, yeah sorry it took half an hour <sighs> thank you for your precious help my dearest miss Walker I'm afraid I may have judged you somewhat hastily don't mention it mr. Steiner tell me about the prosthesis I need to take it back to Kirk very quickly if of course you agree to let me have it yeah 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 I just have a few small adjustments to make. It involves very precise and meticulous mechanics, understand? Will it take long? I'm sorry to insist, but I also have to give a hand to those unfortunate yukels. I need to help them get across the lake with their herd of ostriches. I'm so worried about them. Once the mechanical leg is at last ready, I can go to the clinic and bring back young Kirk to you. That way you only have to worry about what happens to the other yukels. That is super helpful. That's so nice of you, Mr. Steiner. But why are you doing this? Ah, uh, I wasn't extremely nice to you earlier. And also, the way the Yukols are treated by the other townsfolk here, in my own town, disgusts me. So I want to help those poor devils, even if I am in no way absolutely certain they should be crossing the lake. What on earth's the matter, Mr. Steiner? The next stage of your journey is the poor, cursed town of Baranor. It has become hell on earth since the time of the last great ostrich migration. Please join me downstairs for a moment, Miss Walker. I'll show you exactly what I mean. If you mean the newspaper clippings, I already stole those. But... I'll follow you. Uh, where did he go? Oh, there he is. Ooh, projector. Look just next to the films there, Miss Walker. You should find a film on Baranor. Uh, where? The film's missing. Yeah, yeah, it is, obviously. Um, in the... Subtitles, he says, look next to the shelves to find the film. In the voiceover, he says, look next to the films. Uh, neither makes much sense, but... Ooh, shiny. That's the one. And the little cursor is back. Why does my Windows cursor keep popping up? I'm assuming it's just a game sort of kind of glitching. Right, uh, do I... Fortunately, it seems to have been spared from the deadly radioactive cloud. 
our town was mobilized to go to the aid of our neighbors. Although our town seems were modest when compared to the catastrophe, there were nonetheless among us some brilliant mechanical engineers. In a record time, they developed a small army of automatons capable of helping the affected people. Those men and dogs of steel could go where a human could no longer set foot without becoming seriously ill. Over there, they could be excavators, rescue workers, and treasure bearers. Oscar! They all look like him! Truly magnificent pieces, Nishvar. The XZ-2000 model is most assuredly one of Hans's major masterpieces. So Baranor suffered the ravages of a nuclear accident. But according to that film, the automatons you designed with hands should have helped save lots of lives, right? I'm afraid that's not how things went. Because of Captain Obo. Ah, that must be Sarah. Please come this way, Miss Walker. I'll introduce you. Mm, I met her already. But, um... Yeah, Captain Obo some somehow did something and uh, he feels so bad about it that he's now the village drunk. I assume. Miss Walker, may I introduce you to Sarah, my granddaughter? We've actually already met, haven't we, Sarah? I actually owe Miss Walker a candle. Thanks to her calmness and peace of mind, I'm still here and on my feet. She found my medication and gave it to me before it was too late. Donner Vetter. You don't mean you had another attack, do you? Ah, you're being so very naughty, Grandfather. You absolutely must let Dr. Zemiatine examine you. Come on, stay calm, my little child. When I go to the clinic to take the prosthesis to the young Yukol, I'll stop by and see the good doctor. Until then, why don't you make yourself really useful to Miss Walker? She's looking for some way to transport the Yukol caravan to the other side of the lake. Well, I think I've already found the solution. The boat in the film, the crystal, it must be the ship that's docked in the port. If it was able to transport the automatons you and Hans built, it could carry the ostriches across the lake. Ah, that's not a bad idea. But unfortunately, there's a slight problem of size, dear Miss Walker. What do you mean? What on earth do you mean? Obo became a poor wreck when he simply abandoned our automatons and Baranor. The coward now drowns his sorrows in vodka. He's convinced that he fled because of the monster in the lake. Huh! <laughs> Apparently the imbecile saw the monster, Himmelgott. So he went back on his tracks, abandoning all the automatons and Baranor, as well as the people they were there to rescue. Grandfather. I know you're still really angry with Captain Obo because he abandoned the automatons that you built with your friend Hans and Baranor. He was supposed to wait for them. They were going to take all the survivors they found in the rubble to the boat and then bring everyone here to safety in Valsambor. But in the end, when he got to the beach at Baranor and saw the disaster and all the dead, he became really afraid. The disease, the radiation. He must have had an uncontrollable panic attack, so he immediately turned back, dumped the machines on the crystal into the lake, and came back empty-handed to Valsambor. And the automatons have been there ever since, in hell. But who knows? Maybe today he'll want to sell. I'm sure Kate will be capable of convincing him to help the Yukels. Yep. Unvoiced line. It's a good thing I've got the subtitles on, actually. All right, then. I'll try and convince Captain Obo. Thank you for everything, Mr. Steiner. I don't know if I really should wish you good luck, dear Miss Walker. Baranur is only an open grave now. That's sad. We also now know um, 
what's up with all those creepy, uh, well, creepy, all those patients we saw in the hospital who were talking about Baranor. They were probably affected by the, um, the nuclear accident. Ah. I just wanted to do that. So we can leave now. <laughs>